another Aikido teacher, Richard Moon, who's, who's been a great inspiration to me as well as a, a great friend. And I'm happy to have him and his, uh, his, his perspective and his, his insight as part of tonight's uh, session. Hello, Richard. How are you? Well, and thank you. Good. Thank you for being here with us. And thank you for inviting me. It's an honor to be with you and explore this question. Let me start by asking you if you would be willing mm -hmm. to take a deep breath. And now I'm going to guess by now you've also noticed that you're still breathing, that something is breathing. There was a you that took a breath and there's a you that's breathing or would we call one of them you and one of them not you? Uh, I'm going to play it this way. And these are my stories. You have to play with your own experience to find out what's true for you. So in that spirit, let me just share that there's an aspect of you that's conscious. And then there's this, other aspect of you that's breathing whether you're conscious or not and i want to say if you start to listen to that impulse to breathe and you start to connect those two aspects that it changes who you are and so i'd like to if i may and if you'd be willing i'd like to call up the you that i'd like to speak to and that you would be listening to the impulse to breathe and that would mean listening in the sense of as if there were something important in the message of the desire to breathe. How fast that breath wants to come in, how strong, how deep. When we get to the next finer dimension, where it penetrates into the body, where the cells seem to light up with oxygenation or vitality. And the you that then at that point chooses to breathe in a little deeper or hold the breath a little longer or play with the impulse to breathe until those two forces, if you will, become one unified field. And that is in my explanation, what I call the unified field of being. And that's who I'm hoping we're gonna connect with, uh, me with myself that way and me with you in that way so that we can speak just a little bit about this process. And if this is making sense to you and you're listening to the impulse to breathe and you're still there, I was saying the other day, this is kind of where I, I think people get a little lost. Either they go into the, if I may, Judeo-Christian thing of not my will, but thy will be done, or the egoistic thing of all that matters is me. And I want to say that both those things are part of the unified field. They both originate as Linda pointed out, Osensei's comment was, and the way I heard it translated was, all the problems in this world exist because everyone's forgotten that everything emanates from a single source. And if you're listening to that impulse to breathe and you're kind of sensing into where it comes from, it's not a location, it's a feeling. I wanna say that that impulse to breathe exists in all of us and we all share that connection and in that place, we're all one. And that this connection with this source of breath, what I would call your spirit, call it what you will. These are my stories. You're entitled to your own experience. But as you connect with that essential spirit and the identity that you know recognizes itself as part of this larger connection or you're attuning into something much more than what you know, then I think that I key comes forward. When uh, O Sensei talked about standing on the floating bridge, I picture it this way and I have no idea what he meant. I'm making up stories. You make your own experience. You find your own truth. That one foot stands in the manifest world and one foot stands in heaven. That we connect ourselves as a bridge between those two realms. I'm going to give you one more quick exercise what I call meditation microdosing. If you start by aligning your physical body with the force of gravity, and you can play with that a little bit until you feel that the musculature is no longer holding you up, the weight of the being is transferred through the skeletal structure. 
And as soon as you find that alignment and you tell me what's true for you, doesn't your physical musculature start to relax? So align, allow, and then notice how it feels when those two things are true. Appreciate. Align, allow, appreciate. My three-second meditation microdosing connected with listening to the impulse to breathe, I think brings us to a level of consciousness where we can speak beyond the manifest world to connect the two worlds. And I thought Linda's layout was very um, essential in terms of, uh, I make the distinction this way, Aikido and Aikiwaza. We use the Aikiwaza to practice the Aikido. And I fear that a lot of that essence got lost in people practicing technique and that the reminder that we just and it's easy to do but the reminder we need to bring ourselves to is aligning with that the impulse to breathe source of the impulse to breathe the connection with the totality and i think from that space we start to create the kind of reciprocating echoes that create this oneness of being that O sensei called a great love, omnipresent in all times and all quarters of the universe. Because I want to say that this crisis that we're in um, is not the COVID virus. And again, my story. That's a symptom of the crisis that we're in that comes out of losing the fact that everything emanates from a single source. And I'm gonna suggest that if everyone on earth were connecting to this universal force in that way, listening to their impulse to breathe, feeling it as the voice of the spirit itself, feeling us all connected in a similar way through that voice and feeling each other that way, we would have created a very different reality in the manifest world. We would have brought much more of the heavenly and the divine into the manifest. And Osensei said, Aikido is not about being strong and felling an opponent. It's about reconciling the world, making human beings one family. I don't think he meant everybody had to get along exactly, but recognizing this single source, coming from this single source, working together in a way of listening to each other rather than uh, fighting with each other. Uh, that's what Aikido showed us. And I think, you know, particularly here in the U.S., the fact that about 40, 45% of the people here think that the COVID uh, virus is a you know, left-wing plot or something like that, uh, and the other group can't hear each other very well to try and understand why we feel the way we do. And so uh, in those ways, when we become susceptible to that divisiveness, uh, we stop listening to each other and we stop emanating from that single source, no matter where you fall on the political divide. Coming back to your oneness, coming back to the sense that we all are connected to this spirit that breathes us, I think creates a reciprocating echo where we start to listen to each other in a way that we start to function in our, whatever happened when you did the breathing exercise, when you did the align, allow, appreciate, I'm going to say you were in a better spirit if that word works for you find your own and that when we're scared out of our wits we create reciprocating echoes that reinforce that tonality until the building uh, walls come tumbling down so i want to come back to doing your work with yourself and the way that i want to encourage you to think about it is sensing into this connection with the totality we lose it we're looking for the knife to make dinner we're trying to fix our car, we're trying to get somewhere on time or whatever. And it's inevitable that we're drawn back into the manifest world because it's difficult enough to negotiate. But making the effort to align with the source of breath or the spirit or the totality or the force or God, however you like to think about it, remembering that connection and operating so that those two become one as your intention to breathe and the impulse to breathe connect and become a unified field. I think we start to be able to create a possibility to divine this world in a way that, that allows us to navigate, to negotiate in the most effective way possible. And our time on this planet, 
in the manifest body is limited. And I think that where I come from, what I share from my instructor, uh, Robert Nadeau, from his instructor, O Sensei, from O Sensei's instructor, the Aiki Kami. And I always said, you know, I never really considered myself a teacher. I never thought I knew enough. But I've been around a while and I could help some of the junior students reconnect your direct connection with the Aiki Kami. Let that guide you in your interaction and resonating the reciprocating echoes that create a sympathetic, a simpatico, a connected, a unified field of being between all of us. And I think at that point, um, when the world's more in harmony, like when a symphony orchestra is more in harmony, it just, the music becomes more beautiful. And in the same way that when you're more in harmony with yourself, you act more intelligently. When we're in harmony with each other, we as a society, we as a culture, we as a species, act more intelligently. And I don't think that's something you can do to other people. I think it's something that when you hit the D string on one violin, if there's another violin in the room, that D string starts to violate, uh, vibrate. If you bring in a vibration of love and harmony and inquiry and um, reconciliation, then those higher angels and everyone else start to vibrate. Yeah. And I think I'd finish there. You know, I, I'm, I'm very appreciative of your ability to, to get people to, to access that, that space within themselves so, so skillfully. And I think that's one aspect of, of allowing ourselves and giving ourselves permission to be able to do that. And, uh, and, and an important part of, of what potentially Aikido offers, offers us as a, as a direct link with our own um, universal nature. So thank you very much for sharing that. That was well done. Just to leave everyone with this thought that you know very well, Patrick. I don't study Aikido as a martial art, an art in the realm of Mars, the god of war. I study Aikido as a Venusial art, an art in the realm of Venus, the goddess of love. Yeah. <laughs> well said. And we'll leave you, we'll leave that, we'll leave that there. Thank you for sharing that, my friend. Thanks for having me. In terms of bringing our, our consciousness to that space, that, that, um, that intelligence that breathes us, the part of us that breathes who we are, how do you see that linked, uh, coming into contact with that how does that open us to being able to function in a more holistic or integral sense in relationship to the world around us? Do you see any relationship between connecting with that internal, that internal intelligence and, and being um, more intelligently uh, responsive with the natural world and, and the world around us? If you simply pay attention to what you're experiencing, uh, you know, it's sort of like when you're driving, you naturally, you know, you could be talking on the phone, eating your hamburger or whatever, and you're following the road without thinking about it much. But when you drift off into sleep mode, that's when you go off the road. Uh, the system will automatically correct to what's needed once you're in that connected or awake state. And so I would say to come out of sleep mode, feel where you are is the way I like to phrase it. Um, start where you start, the way Bob sort of talks about it. Getting present is the way a lot of people would talk about it. But I think connecting your attention with your experience is the wake-up call that sets the natural guidance of the universal intelligence to flow through you. That makes sense. In, in, terms, of, in terms of how you, how you, how you language that, because it's a different kind of language. It's not. It's not the. It's not the 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 type of the type of Cartesian organizing principle that we normally equate with language. What would you call that? That way of of uh, speaking that kind of intelligence. Well, it's a cheap shot here, but I call it Aikido. Okay. When you bring your <laughs> when you bring your attention to connect with your experience, with the energy that is your vitality, 
Mm. The energy itself has intelligence. The universe itself has intelligence. And it's that disconnecting from that single source that causes us to lose our wits, to get scared out of our wits, to act in ways that are contrary to what we, you know, is authentic or natural to us. Mm. And the practices of, you know, what we used to do through Matt Waza, you know, if you're out of touch with yourself enough, you're off balance enough, you have no physical power. So as you start to come into a physical balance, inevitably, the next finer dimension of who you are and how you feel starts to show up. So you start to become a more authentic person You start to respond more creatively. And if I may, I'll just say when the um, individual will merges with that of the universe, creativity begins. That was uh, from Gleason's book talking about a sensei talking about standing on the floating bridge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the universal, when the individual will merges with the universal will, creativity begins. And that natural creativity, it is our most natural state. And like I say, for even the least creative person, it shows up when you like to sing along with the radio in the car. Right, right. So the language of creativity to a certain creativity degree. Is what I'm fond of these yeah. days. Cool. Thank you. Following up on something Moon Sensei said, where he described Aikido as an art of Venus as much or more than an art of March. Would Aikido Doryos do better at recruiting if they really took that idea and ran with it, uh, leaned in, into the art of love, part of what we can learn from Aikido? I think that the two questions that come up for me one is about the idea of recruiting. I think there is a, a bit of a sense of, you know, gee, aren't people, shouldn't they be more interested in Aikido? And I think that's, you know, a long direction. But my, my sense of it is, I know there are some people who really are into it as a martial art. But here's what I'm going to guess, and you can correct me or you can have your own opinion. 5%, maybe, probably 2 or 3%, maybe. And the rest of us are much more, although we'd love to have a little strength and capability to protect and defend everything that we love, uh, most of us don't use it that way. Most of us never get a chance to apply it that way. We're here for something else, and I think it is about having a better relationship with ourselves, with the universal force, with the persons that we love, and learning how to get along with them, especially now that we're locked up together, and so on and so forth. And I think. That's definitely more where I think we offer something to the world, and it's probably a more intelligent way of presenting it. And I have to leave this with, I was just speaking with Bob yesterday about the fact that I, I think it's not just Aikido that's seeing a loss of interest. I'm guessing all the popular mixed martial art, Brazilian jiu-jitsu things, are all, everybody's seeing that now because there's an entire shift in consciousness preceding COVID. And I think tuning into that is probably a much more intelligent use of our energy at the moment than trying to sell Aikido the way we know it. We may have something different to offer at that point. If I may, one is we always practice imaginary ukes. Even when we were training on the mat, we would take moments solo and have imaginary ukes and then back to it. So that, that in a way, has been part of our practice the whole time. But the other piece that I think you know I've always emphasized um, is trying to encourage everyone to study directly with the Aikikami, to find mm -hmm. some direct connection with becoming their own conduit to the divine source of Aiki. And um, that the teacher can help you open that door, but you have to walk through the door. Right. Thank you for sharing that, Richard. And I think there's something that I like, I like what you say, because it, it opens everybody up to that possibility, not just the, the black belts, but everybody is given that doorway. And it doesn't, connecting with that kami doesn't mean that you become a sensei, it just means that you're, you're studying with the same source that he was studying with. Again, that he was very emphatic. I think Bob said he was explicit. He wasn't trying to create martial artists. He was showing you through martial arts what was possible for each of us to become more fully um, who we are. Mm. Cool. That's great. <laughs>